Hello, we're back. Um, so Seema, what's the plan for the rest of the time? Yeah. So, uh, so we'll quickly go through MPI very quickly because, like, like we were talking about, like, uh, during the breaks and everything, we're talking about the MPI, and MPI is very important. So, for example, in like Lumi Supercomputer or whatever, if you want to leverage the thousands of CPUs and the thousands of GPUs, you really need to like use MPI codes. But there are a lot of people who don't do that, and it's it depends <laughs> like which one, uh, which kind of problems are you trying to solve. It depends on what sort of things you need to learn, and and MPI is very important. So you should know like that MPI is important if you're planning on doing like these kind of like mass parallel computations, and and then you should learn about it. But I think for everybody, it's good to learn a few things so that you don't mix it up with the shared memory parallelism. Like, like that's what we're going to like do now. So we'll go quickly check the MPI, like how we remind ourselves how MPI programs are constructed and then run a simple MPI example. And then if you have interest in it, I recommend checking the full tutorial and there's a lot of other materials as well. And if you have any problems with your MPI codes, put them. Uh, you can come and ask us. But let's let's uh, go through that because then we can get to the GPU part. Because I I would guess that a lot of people have been waiting for the GPU part. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> so let's let's just like plow through the MPI. I know that everybody's tired, and sorry about that. But yeah, let's let's just quickly check this. So so MPI. MPI. So in MPI. Yeah. Post Again, things. it's a collective thing. Like you and what we what I said, said previously, all MPI programs they are designed around MPI. So if your program doesn't use MPI, it doesn't use MPI. And and it's a it's like libraries that allow uh, different tasks to communicate with each other in different nodes. And the word task is a like important part. So Slurm thinks of these individual workers when we allocate like. 20 CPUs uh, with M MPI things, mm -hmm. it you, thinks of these as tasks. So you, you saw, saw previously like CPUs per task there in when we, and you might have thought that like, so why is there a CPUs per task here? What is a task? That well, task is an MPI task because like Slurm has been built yeah. around MPI really. Like, like the whole queue yeah. system is being designed so that it can run these massive parallel computations. So that's why everything is a task. But most tasks yeah. are like have only one, like most jobs have only one task. So one MPI task. So don't care about tasks if you don't use MPI. You will always want to have only one task. But if you use MPI, instead of reserving these CPUs, you reserve these tasks. And these are like each task will get its own resources and they will work collectively. So we can look at the example uh, here. Yeah. And I realized that this picture isn't quite right. There would be seven separate boxes in each of these nodes, and there's yeah. arrows between all yeah. of them. But OK, but, so yeah. Oh, yeah, more like this here. Yes. But are we looking for the example? Yeah, let's, let's quickly look at the example. So let's, if you scroll a bit down. So first, we need to, example, like, the MPI, MPI. is is usually that you need to compile the programs. They are like Python for MPI, so MPI for Py, uh, and Julia MPI, and all kinds of things that allow you to run MPI programs, and, and like Snow and other things for R, mm -hmm. so that you can run like MPI codes in other languages, so you don't have to think about this compiling. But this small example yeah. compiles this MPI program. So if you go to the Slurm directory, I think you need to be there. Or you can yeah set the parts differently yeah. So now okay. if you load this open MPI module, uh, in other clusters you might have different versions of MPI installed. But this MPI is usually like it's linked against all of the Slurm things, so that the Slurm knows how to allocate all kinds of stuff. So, uh, so yeah, if you try now the MPI CC, if you try to. I don't know what module did you previously have loaded, but oh, that's a good question. I yeah, don't know. It doesn't okay. really matter. Yeah. And is so, MPI some wrapper around GCC or some compiler that 
Yes. Adds in the MPI libraries. Yes. Okay. And now, now you can run it with multiple tasks if you look at the example. So this does the same kind of pie so calculation, but it uses MPI for this. So one node, two tasks, which means there's two processes that will be communicating, I guess. Yes. I'll leave off the time in memory. Yeah, we'll get the default Just value. Somebody asked me in the notes what are the defaults, and they depend on the site, but uh, in, in Triton you million? get 500 megabytes of memory and that sort of thing. Yeah. Should I try timing it? Uh, don't don't put it there because I think Slurm will like well, run two copies it of it. Like, uh, yeah. 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 So, so when you run these MPI programs, you start basically the same program multiple times, but then Slurm can like handle the com like so that the programs know about each other. So it's it's a it's a whole mess of technologies. There's descriptions yeah. here, uh, but this is like mm -hmm. here we get two like two uh, individual individual workers working in the same machine, but they could be in a different machine and they would like know about each other and they could communicate with each other. And this is yeah. like for these collective codes. So so. MPI is used for these kinds of things. But like, I, I think, yeah. You have to, well, yeah. So here to, yeah, okay. Yeah, but if you're not using MPI, then uh, then don't, <laughs> yeah, like don't worry about it. Always put tasks to one. Don't don't worry mm -hmm. about it too much. Uh, so so don't, don't fret about it too too much. That took even less time for more iterations. Yeah, it's probably so depends on which notes you get fast. and which yeah, like it's C code. So so basically all the time here is being spent in setting it up and almost no time in running it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah in, yeah so in this kind of situation it's quite uh what am I and in the batch scripts you have to use S run here. Is that correct? Yes, that is because, because like S run. Yeah. So S run. So S run has some magic stuff inside where it says, "Okay, I know this is an MPI program. I'm gonna start two copies of the same thing and tell them how to talk to each other." And this happens magically in the background with MPI that we don't need basically. to worry about. Basically, yes, <laughs> and and if the magic breaks, it's on us, on us, basically. So, but but mm -hmm. yeah, like this is like how you run like basically MPF programs, and and they are like yeah. other tools, like I mentioned, like higher level languages that can still use MPF, like MPF or Pi yeah. and stuff like that. You can learn about it more later if you're interested. But for time sake, uh, let's go to the GPU chapter. I'd say if you have any questions, okay. just put them into the into the notes. Let's check. So. The notes show no questions. So yes, let's go on to GPUs.